The Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, has long been seen as a pillar of justice and integrity, but beneath its pristine image lies a dark underbelly of corruption that has rocked the nation. Today I bring you unbelievable facts surrounding some of the most corrupt FBI agents ever who betrayed the public's trust and abused their power to benefit themselves. Babak Bruman Babak Bruman's story will leave you questioning the very foundations of trust and integrity within our law enforcement agencies. From accepting bribes to accessing secret databases, this former agent's actions will make your jaw drop. Babak Bruman's downfall began when evidence surfaced of his involvement in a bribery scheme. It was revealed that he had been accepting large sums of money from notorious criminals in exchange for confidential information. This shocking revelation sent shockwaves through the FBI and tarnished its reputation forever. But the corruption didn't stop there. Babak Bruman's access to secret databases allowed him to manipulate investigations and protect criminals from facing justice. He would leak sensitive information to criminals, giving them an unfair advantage and undermining the very purpose of the FBI. So Bruman basically sold his access to confidential federal law enforcement databases. That's what he did. And in exchange, he received a lot of uh, benefits and a lot of things of value. As the investigation into Babak Bruman's activities deepened, more shocking details emerged. It it was discovered that he had been involved in a wide range of criminal activities, including drug trafficking and money laundering. The extent of his corruption was truly mind-boggling. But perhaps the most shocking revelation was Babak Bruman's illegal ties to the mafia. It was uncovered that he had been working closely with notorious mafia bosses, providing them with confidential information and protection from law enforcement. This unholy alliance between an FBI agent and the mafia sent shockwaves through the criminal underworld and the law enforcement community alike. Babak Bruman's connection to the mafia allowed him to operate with impunity. He would tip off mafia bosses about ongoing investigations, enabling them to evade capture and continue their criminal activities. This blatant disregard for the law and the safety of innocent people is truly shocking. The consequences of Babak Bruman's actions were far-reaching. Countless cases were compromised and innocent lives were put at risk. The public's trust in the FBI was shattered and questions were raised about the integrity of the entire law enforcement system. As the investigation into Babak Bruman's corruption unfolded, it became clear that he had amassed a significant amount of wealth through his illegal activities. He lived a lavish lifestyle with expensive cars, luxury properties, and extravagant vacations. This stark contrast between his ill-gotten wealth and the modest salaries of his fellow agents only added to the shock and outrage surrounding his case. They both liked the flashy badge, and they both liked the flashy life. So it was this bromance, this friendship, this connection. The agency launched a thorough investigation into the matter, determined to uncover the full extent of his misconduct. The evidence against Bruman was overwhelming. The FBI's investigation revealed a trail of corruption, bribery, and abuse of power that left no doubt about his guilt. The consequences of his actions are not only legal, but also personal, as he will forever be marked as one of the most corrupt FBI agents in history. The impact of his betrayal extends far beyond his own life, tarnishing the reputation of the FBI and eroding public trust in law enforcement. The ongoing investigation into Bruman's case is a joint effort between the FBI, the Department Department of Justice Office of the Inspector General and IRS Criminal Investigation. These agencies are working tirelessly to ensure that justice is served and that the full extent of Bruman's corruption is exposed. As the trial began, the prosecution argued that Bruman knowingly accepted bribes from Edgar Sarkisian, an Armenian mobster, in exchange for protection and access to FBI databases. They presented evidence that Bruman was fully aware of Sarkisian's involvement in credit card fraud, contradicting his claims of ignorance. In a surprising turn of events, Sargsyan testified against Brumund in exchange for a reduced sentence. He revealed the details of their illicit partnership, providing further evidence of Brumund's involvement in corruption. Sargsyan's testimony further solidified the case against Brumund and left little room for doubt about his guilt. His defense attorney, in an attempt to sway the jury, highlighted his client's commendable career and the risks he took on the job. The defense drew a comparison between Brumund's situation and the movie character Donnie Brasco, suggesting that working undercover can blur the lines between right and wrong. In the end, the judge handed down a sentence of six years in federal prison for Bruman. This significant punishment reflected the gravity of his offenses and served as a stern warning to others who might be tempted to betray the public's trust. During the sentencing, Bruman expressed his love for the country and his shame for being handcuffed in court. However, his remorse came too late to undo the damage he had caused. The consequences of his actions would reverberate far beyond the courtroom, forever staining his reputation and leaving a lasting impact on the FBI. Bruman's sentencing marked the end of a tumultuous chapter in his life, but the repercussions of his corruption would continue to be felt. Charles F. McGonagall
Charles F. McGonagall's career in the FBI was marked by both remarkable achievements and a dark underbelly of corruption. From the moment he joined the Bureau in 1996, McGonagall displayed an exceptional talent for espionage and counterintelligence. His rise through the ranks was swift, and he held various positions that allowed him to exert his influence and power. One of the most notable chapters in McGonagall's career was his involvement in the investigation into the release of State Department documents and Chelsea Manning's collaboration with WikiLeaks. As an integral part of the team leading the charge, McGonagall showcased his exceptional investigative skills and dedication to national security. His efforts were recognized and praised by his superiors, propelling him further up the ladder of success. In 2016, McGonagall was appointed as the Section Chief of the Cyber Counterintelligence Coordination Section, a position that granted him immense authority and control. It was during this time that whispers of his involvement in illicit activities began to circulate. However, it was when McGonagall became the special agent in charge of the counterintelligence Intelligence Division for the New York Field Office that his true colors began to emerge. This position afforded him unparalleled power and influence, which he would exploit for personal gain and to further his own corrupt agenda. During his tenure, McGonagall engaged in a series of illegal activities that would ultimately lead to his downfall. Money laundering, making false statements, and violating U.S. sanctions on Russia were just a few of the charges leveled against him. His actions not only compromised the integrity of the Bureau, but also posed a significant threat to national security. After retiring from the FBI in 2018, Charles F. McGonagall embarked on a new chapter of his life in the private sector. His transition from the bureau to the corporate world seemed like a natural progression for a man of his stature and expertise. However, little did anyone know that this move would only serve as a smokescreen for his continued involvement in illicit activities. McGonagall's first foray into the private sector was with Brookfield Properties, a prominent real estate firm. As the head of security, he was entrusted with safeguarding the company's assets and ensuring the safety of its employees. On the surface, it appeared that McGonagall was using his skills and knowledge for the greater good, but behind closed doors, a darker side of his character began to emerge. He used his position to exploit his connections and engage in shady dealings, all in the pursuit of personal gain. Money laundering, bribery, and extortion became the tools of his trade as he manipulated the system to his advantage. But McGonagall's thirst for power and wealth was insatiable. He later left Brookfield Properties and accepted a position as the global head of security for Am and Resorts, a luxury hospitality brand. This move allowed him to expand his web of corruption on an international scale. He used his position to facilitate money laundering schemes, making false statements, and further violating U.S. sanctions. However, McGonagall's web of deceit began to unravel when federal authorities started to close in on his illicit activities. In January 2023, he was arrested and federally indicted on charges of money laundering, making false statements, and violating U.S. sanctions on Russia. The evidence against McGonagall was overwhelming leaving no room for escape. Faced with the prospect of a lengthy trial and the weight of his crimes bearing down on him, he made a shocking decision. In August 2023, McGonagall pleaded guilty to working with a Russian oligarch, admitting to conspiring to violate U.S. sanctions and laundering payments in a separate case in New York. The revelation of McGonagall's guilt sent shockwaves through the private sector and further eroded the public's trust in the integrity of those in positions of power. His actions not only tarnished his own reputation, but also cast a dark shadow over the company's he had been associated with. His actions also disappointed his fellow officers who trusted him with their lives. That's why it shocks people like me, you know, down to our core, because we just don't expect these kinds of things to happen. We, we believe that we're working in, an, in a circle of folks that are that are trustworthy, that, that are upholding their oaths, that have the interests of their, their country first and foremost in their minds. The downfall of Charles F. McGonagall serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked ambition and the devastating consequences of succumbing to the allure of corruption. Richard Miller. Richard Miller, a former FBI agent, made headlines as one of the most corrupt individuals in the history of the Bureau. Miller, a 20-year veteran of the FBI, had a lackluster career and a history of poor job performance. Despite this, he managed to avoid losing his job, which would prove to be a grave mistake for the Bureau. It was during this time that Miller's actions took a sinister turn. In the late 1980s, Miller engaged in an affair with Svetlana Ogorodnikova, a Russian immigrant. Little did anyone know that this affair would lead to one of the most shocking cases of espionage in FBI history. Miller, driven by his desires and greed, began providing classified information to Svetlana in exchange for 
favors, cash, and even gold. The information Miller shared with Svetlana was highly sensitive and could have had severe consequences for national security. He compromised ongoing investigations, jeopardizing the safety of agents and informants alike. Miller's actions not only betrayed his duty as an FBI agent, but also put the lives of countless individuals at risk. During Miller's trial, the full extent of his unethical behavior came to light. It was revealed that he had a history of selling a patented device and skimming bureau cash. The trial was a spectacle that captivated the nation. The courtroom was filled with tension as the prosecution presented evidence of Miller's espionage activities and his illicit affair with Svetlana. The defense, on the other hand, tried to paint Miller as a victim of circumstance, arguing that he had been manipulated by the Ogorodnikovs. Ultimately, the jury found Miller guilty in his second trial. He was sentenced to two consecutive life terms, plus an additional 50 years. It was a landmark moment in the history of the FBI, as it marked the first time an agent had been convicted of espionage against the United States. However, Miller's convictions were later overturned in 1989 due to errors in the trial. He was granted bail and had a third trial in 1990. Despite his attempts to prove his innocence, Miller was once again found guilty and sentenced to 20 years in prison. This time his sentence was not overturned, and he served a significant portion of it before being released in 1994. The arrest and conviction of Richard Miller served as a wake-up call for the FBI. It prompted a thorough review of its internal security protocols and led to stricter measures to prevent similar incidents in the future. The case also highlighted the importance of maintaining the integrity and trustworthiness of those in positions of power. He was the first FBI agent to be charged with espionage. Before Richard Miller came along, the idea that an agent of the FBI could be disloyal to his country was inconceivable. Now it isn't. The aftermath of Richard Miller's conviction marked a turning point in his life and brought about significant changes in his circumstances. After serving 13 years in prison, Miller was released and faced the daunting task of rebuilding his life outside of the confines of a cell. To start anew, Miller decided to pursue a different career path. He trained to become a computer technician, seeking to utilize his skills in a different field. This transition allowed him to distance himself from his tainted past and provided a glimmer of hope for a fresh start. However, the shadow of Miller's past continued to loom over him. Despite his efforts to rebuild his life, he faced significant obstacles in finding employment and regaining the trust of others. The notoriety surrounding his case made it difficult for him to escape the scrutiny and suspicion that followed him wherever he went. In the years following his release, Miller lived a relatively quiet life, away from the public eye. He sought solace in the anonymity of his new career and focused on rebuilding his relationships and finding a sense of normalcy. However, the scars of his past actions would forever be a part of his identity. Tragically, Richard Miller's story came to an end on a October 16, 2013, when he passed away in Utah. His death marked the final chapter in a life marred by corruption and betrayal. It serves as a reminder of the lasting impact of one's actions and the importance of upholding the principles of integrity and trust. Gordon Liddy Following the completion of his law degree, Liddy joined the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, in 1957. This marked the start of his law enforcement career, where he would gain valuable experience and lay the groundwork for his future endeavors. After leaving the FBI, Liddy pursued a career as an assistant district attorney in Poughkeepsie, New York. It was during this time that he gained recognition for his role in the arrest of countercultural icon Timothy Leary. Liddy's involvement in high-profile cases showcased his tenacity and determination to uphold the law. In 1968, Liddy took a leap into the world of politics by running for Congress. Although his campaign was ultimately unsuccessful, it marked a pivotal moment in his career. Liddy's foray into politics would later intersect with the infamous Watergate scandal, forever altering the course of his life. Liddy's political aspirations led him to join Richard Nixon's presidential campaign in 1968. He became a key figure in Nixon's inner circle, known for his unwavering loyalty and willingness to go to extreme lengths to protect the interests of the administration. After Nixon's victory, Liddy was appointed as a special assistant to the Secretary of the U.S. Department of the Treasury. It was during his time in this role that Liddy crossed paths with White House aide Egil Bud Krogh Jr., who was in charge of the Plumbers, a special investigations unit tasked with preventing leaks of sensitive information. The stage was set for Liddy's involvement in the Watergate scandal. In 1971, Liddy, along with former CIA agent E. Howard Hunt, orchestrated a break-in at the office of Daniel Ellsberg's psychiatrist. Ellsberg had leaked the Pentagon Papers, which had angered Nixon. This covert operation was just the beginning of Liddy's involvement in the scandal that would rock the nation. I want to know what, you know, Brian's got right here. And he, he took his hand down, he hit his lower drawer in his desk. And I knew that that's where he kept whatever negative information we had about the Democrats in, in his possession. And I understood that to mean that he wanted to know whatever O'Brien had negative about us.
The subsequent investigation into the break-in revealed a web of illegal activities orchestrated by Liddy and his cohorts. Wiretapping, burglary, and conspiracy charges were brought against Liddy and Hunt, among others involved in the scandal. The nation was captivated by the unfolding drama as the Watergate scandal exposed the dark underbelly of political corruption. Liddy's trial began in January 1973, and the evidence presented painted a damning picture of his involvement in the Watergate break-in. Witnesses testified to Liddy's meticulous plan and his unwavering commitment to carrying out the operation. Liddy himself did not shy away from taking responsibility for his actions, proudly proclaiming that he would do it again for my president. In March 1973, Liddy was found guilty on multiple charges, including burglary, wiretapping, and conspiracy. He was sentenced to a staggering 20 years in federal prison. The severity of the sentence reflected the gravity of the crimes committed and the impact they had on the nation. Despite his conviction, Liddy remained defiant and unapologetic. He embraced his role in the Watergate scandal, even going so far as to drive a car with a license plate that read H2O Gate. Liddy's actions and demeanor only added to the intrigue and notoriety surrounding the scandal. However, Liddy's time behind bars would not be as long as initially expected. In 1977, President Jimmy Carter commuted Liddy's sentence to eight years, taking into account his time served and his cooperation with the authorities. Liddy was released from prison in 1977, having served four years and four months of his sentence. Following his release, Liddy embarked on a new chapter of his life. He transitioned into the world of media, hosting a radio talk show that allowed him to express his conservative views and engage in spirited debates. Liddy's notoriety from the Watergate scandal served as a platform for his career in showbiz, where he made appearances in movies and TV shows, often playing villainous roles. The Watergate scandal had far-reaching consequences, ultimately leading to the resignation of President Richard Nixon. It exposed the dark underbelly of political corruption and forever changed the way Americans viewed their government. Liddy's role in the scandal and his subsequent conviction served as a stark reminder of the consequences that can arise from unchecked power and unethical behavior. Robert Hansen in 1976, Hansen's path took a fateful turn when he joined the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI. Little did anyone know that this seemingly promising young agent would become one of the most damaging spies in U.S. history. At the time, the FBI was an esteemed law enforcement agency dedicated to protecting the nation's security. Hansen's entry into the FBI was seen as a step towards a noble and honorable career. However, it was during his time at the FBI that Hansen's true nature began to emerge. While on the surface, he appeared to be a dedicated agent, behind closed doors, he was harboring a secret desire for power and financial gain. Hansen's actions were fueled by a thirst for power and wealth. He saw an opportunity to exploit his position within the FBI for personal profit, and the lure of financial gain proved irresistible. Hansen's espionage activities provided him with a steady stream of income, earning him a total of $500,000 plus jewelry for his betrayal. This desire would ultimately lead him down a treacherous path of betrayal and espionage. Hansen's involvement in espionage activities began when he offered his services to the Soviet Main Intelligence Directorate, GRU. Motivated by financial gain rather than political or ideological beliefs, Hansen saw an opportunity to exploit his position within the FBI for personal profit. His knowledge of FBI bugging activities and lists of suspected Soviet intelligence agents made him an invaluable asset to the GRU. Robert Hansen's espionage activities had a devastating impact on U.S. national security, compromising vital information and endangering the safety of countless individuals. As one of the most damaging spies in U.S. history, Hansen's actions were described as an intelligence disaster of unprecedented proportions. Hansen's betrayal began in 1979 when he started selling classified documents to the KGB, the Soviet Union's intelligence agency. The information he provided compromised U.S. strategies in nuclear war, military weapons technologies, and the U.S. counterintelligence program. The extent of the damage caused by Hansen's actions is difficult to fully comprehend. When you give up the names of live sources, you're doing the maximum damage that you can. One of the most shocking revelations of Hansen's espionage career was his disclosure of the FBI's eavesdropping tunnel under the Soviet embassy. This multi-million dollar project, designed to gather intelligence on Soviet activities, was now exposed. The tunnel had been a critical tool in the FBI's efforts to monitor Soviet communications and gather vital information. Hansen's betrayal not only compromised ongoing operations, but also revealed the extent of the FBI's intelligence gathering capabilities to the Soviets. Hansen's actions also had 
had dire consequences for the individuals involved in intelligence operations. The names of KGB agents working for the U.S. were compromised, putting their lives at risk. Some of these agents were executed by the Soviets, their identities exposed by Hansen's treachery. The loss of these valuable assets dealt a severe blow to U.S. intelligence efforts and compromised ongoing operations. The impact of Hansen's espionage activities extended beyond the immediate damage caused by the compromised information. The loss of trust and confidence in the FBI and U.S. intelligence agencies was significant. The revelation that one of their own had been working as a double agent for over two decades shook the foundations of national security. It raised questions about the effectiveness of counterintelligence measures and the ability to detect and prevent such betrayals in the future. The FBI launched a mole hunting team to uncover the second intelligence leak, but Hansen remained undetected for years. His ability to evade suspicion and continue his espionage activities was a testament to his cunning and caution. It was only through a combination of investigative techniques that his actions were finally brought to light in 2001. Hansen's arrest came after he made a dead drop, leaving a package of classified materials at a designated location. This marked the beginning of the end of his career as a spy. Charged with espionage, Hansen pleaded guilty and cooperated with authorities to avoid the death penalty. His sentence was life imprisonment without parole, a fitting punishment for the damage he had caused. Hansen's life came to an end on June 5, 2023, when he was discovered unresponsive in his prison cell. Despite the attempts made to revive him, they were unfortunately unsuccessful, and he was pronounced dead. It is widely believed that Hansen's passing was a result of natural causes. The impact of Hansen's espionage activities on U.S. national security cannot be overstated. The compromised information and the loss of valuable assets had far-reaching consequences. It took years for the FBI and U.S. intelligence agencies to recover from the damage inflicted by Hansen's betrayal. John Joseph Connolly Jr. John Joseph Connolly Jr.'s relationship with James Whitey Bulger and the Winter Hill Gang is a dark and twisted tale that exposes the depths of corruption within the FBI. Connolly, a former FBI agent, formed an unholy alliance with Bulger and his gang, providing them with crucial information and protection from prosecution. This partnership allowed the Winter Hill Gang to operate with impunity, wreaking havoc on the streets of Boston for years. The story begins when Connolly first met Bulger and the Winter Hill Gang members as FBI informants. Recognizing the potential value of their criminal connections, Connolly saw an opportunity to advance his career and gain valuable intelligence on organized crime. Little did he know that this decision would lead him down a path of deceit, betrayal, and ultimately his own downfall. Connolly's relationship with Bulger and the Winter Hill Gang was built on a foundation of trust and mutual benefit. In exchange for information about rival gangs and ongoing investigations, Connolly provided Bulger and his associates with a level of protection that allowed them to continue their criminal activities undisturbed. This arrangement not only ensured the gang's survival, but also bolstered Connolly's reputation within the FBI. He even boasted on television how Bulger was an asset to the FBI. Well, these were two uh, highly placed assets of the Bureau. Uh, and you have to remember why they became assets of the Bureau. Which was that they, you, you wanted to bring down well, yes, the Italian we, we Mafia. We wanted to bring down the, the Italian Mafia. Connolly's relationship with Bulger allowed him to gain valuable information about rival gangs and criminal activities, which he used to further his own personal gain. He would tip off Bulger and his gang about ongoing investigations, allowing them to evade capture and continue their criminal enterprises. This unholy alliance between an FBI agent and a notorious criminal was unprecedented and sent shockwaves throughout the law enforcement community. But Connolly's corruption didn't stop there. He was also involved in racketeering, using his position to extort money from individuals and businesses. He would offer protection in exchange for hefty sums of cash, effectively turning a blind eye to criminal activities as long as he received his cut. This abuse of power not only tarnished the reputation of the FBI, but also allowed criminals to operate with impunity. As the years went by, Connolly's loyalty to Bulger and the Winter Hill Gang grew stronger. He became deeply entangled in their criminal enterprises, using his position within the FBI to manipulate investigations and shield them from prosecution. Connolly's actions went far beyond the boundaries of his duty as an agent, blurring the lines between law enforcement and organized crime. The corrupt relationship between Connolly and Bulger reached its peak during the 1970s and 1980s, a period marked by the Winter Hill Gang's reign of terror in Boston. Bulger, known for his ruthless nature and strategic mind, used his connections with Connolly to eliminate rival gang members and expand his criminal empire. The FBI agent turned a blind eye to the gang's activities, allowing them to operate with impunity. One of the most shocking aspects of Connolly's relationship with Bulger was the level of trust 
trust they developed. Bulger saw Connolly as a valuable asset, someone who could provide him with critical information that could potentially save his life. In return, Connolly basked in the glory of being associated with one of the most feared and powerful criminals in Boston. However, the corrupt alliance between Connolly and Bulger eventually began to unravel. As the FBI started to investigate the Winter Hill Gang, suspicions arose about Connolly's involvement with the criminal organization. The truth was slowly coming to light, and the consequences would be devastating for all involved. In 1999, Connolly was indicted on charges of alerting Bulger and his associate, Steve Flemmy, to ongoing investigations and accepting bribes. The extent of his corruption shocked the nation, revealing the deep-rooted flaws within the FBI. In 2002, Connolly was convicted of racketeering and obstruction of justice, marking the beginning of the end of his criminal career. Connolly managed to receive pension benefits while in prison, a shocking revelation that highlighted the flaws in the system. Additionally, he was granted a conditional medical release, further adding to the outrage and disbelief surrounding his case. It seemed that, no matter the extent of his crimes, Connolly was able to manipulate the system to his advantage. The downfall of Connolly and the exposure of his corrupt relationship with Bulger and the Winter Hill Gang sent shockwaves through the law enforcement community. It was a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked power and the devastating consequences of betrayal. Connolly's actions tarnished the reputation of the FBI and left a lasting impact on the lives of those affected by the Winter Hill Gang reign of terror. If you like this video, click the card on your screen to see more videos like this.